believe there is a ridiculous amount of pedophilia among the upper echelons of society. Whether it is uncovered in the Catholic Church, British Parliament, Hollywood, Washington DC, Saudi Arabia, the mainstream media doesn't seem interested in shining a light on the networks and procurers who allow this practice to thrive. Remember when Sasha Baron Cohen inadvertently uncovered an underage service in Las Vegas? Imagine the demand required for this heinous practice to exist. Offered by the concierge no less. PETA was formed by meat companies to make animal rights activists look like idiots. The majority of animal rights activists don't like PETA. PETA wastes a lot of their own time calling out video games and cartoons. They operate shelters that have kill rates over 90%. Many of the animals they kill are perfectly healthy, happy, and adoptable. They also just make people who actually care about animal rights look stupid as hell with their parody games. No real animal welfare advocate thinks like, Pokemon is a problem. The USA will never add colleges to public funding like they did with high schools because then the enlistment rate for the military would plummet. Source, everyone I know who joined the service just to help pay for school. In addition to this the federal government makes a ton of money off of student loans. Source, just took out 70k with 6 plus percent interest rate that will accumulate for a minimum of 4 years before I even start to pay them off. Multiply this by every student that doesn't default on their loans and that is a lot of money. Most anti-smoking slash vaping ads, including those truth ads are funded by tobacco companies, that part isn't conspiracy it's just a fact. Sometime in the 80s the industry was sued and part of the settlement included them funding anti-smoking ads. It may technically be opinion, but I don't think many are gonna disagree that most of those ads are also just plain annoying as hell. I think that's on purpose, so you'll ignore them, hell I personally have almost wanted to smoke just to spite the ads. I honestly think a lot of people from the 1% richest people in the world hold the human sex trafficking industry. The reason I think this is because no country is showing awareness to this issue like it should be. I think they hold so many positions of power and media outlets with the checkbook that they can get away with it without people putting up too much of a fuss. All the UFO sightings throughout history are just humans from the future on a time traveling safari meant to observe how we were in the past. They are supposed to keep out of sight. But thanks to human or mechanical errors there have been hiccups with their cloaking which have resulted in being seen. That's why there have always been so many reports of them throughout history, but there has never been an attack. It's just us. Also the reason why we don't see as many examples of UFOs now, even through pretty much everyone has a camera, is because people are not that interested in this time period, since we already document aspects of human life all the time. All this complaining about millennials being lazy and entitled is designed to push more young people to prove they aren't, by adopting unhealthy work habits, such as working overtime without complaint, not taking vacation time, etc. I think this became especially necessary after millennials got more burned out and resentful as unpaid internships became a huge thing. It seems like that helped more people see the light on being exploited and manipulated by workplaces. More and more people are being screwed over by their employers while being told that they should basically be grateful that people are willing to pay them. Employers aren't cutting you a paycheck because they care about you. You fulfill their needs. They aren't your family, and if it's a 40-hour work week, you don't owe them a minute more than 40 hours, and that's not laziness, that's refusing to be taken advantage of. Avril Lavigne being dead and substituted by her doppelganger Melissa Vandella. This meme isn't dead yet. It makes sense considering Melissa was allegedly hired as Avril's publicity double. The conspiracy focuses on whether Melissa assumed Avril's identity or not, and if Avril committed suicide. I think a reason we haven't been visited by extraterrestrials is because they don't possess the same motivations as us. We as humans want to explore, we want to expand and grow. Aliens from other planets may have no reason to do that. They might be totally cool with being fully sentient but have no wish to map out their planet, or build. They could be as intelligent as us, or even more so, but just not have that drive to seek out other life like we do. Maybe they even know we're just here with their advanced technology and just don't care. I believe that human civilization may have gotten as advanced as we are now in the distant past. First, anatomically modern humans have been around for like 300,000 years. Civilization, from the earliest settlement we know of to today is maybe 20,000 years old. In short, there's absolutely plenty of time to go from Sumerians to Americans nearly 10 times over in the time span between the first modern humans and Sumerians. 
and given that there's nothing unusual about the humans who build Sumer. Second, there are lots of legends about human civilization being destroyed by angry gods, usually because of humans behaving badly. The Greeks had a story like that, the Bible, the Hopi, the Zarathustrians, just about any place where there's a record, you can find history of and often prophecies of a catastrophe that ends civilization and more often than not, caused by human hubris. Third, there are all kinds of anomalies in history. Egypt has model airplanes, Indian scripture has vimeenas that sound a lot like airplanes or spacecraft. There's the Pyrace map that shows Antarctica before it had been discovered, and it's accurate. These things don't make sense unless you have people understanding technology near our own level before us. All money created cannot be paid back because of interest. Therefore the monetary system is a pyramid scheme and trying to survive is like playing musical chairs. Oil and car companies used fear-mongering and assassins to stop electric or innovative cars from development in the 20th century. There was this guy who designed a car with an engine in the front and headlights which turned as the front wheels turned and he was assassinated. Others have designed cars powered by water or magnets were also killed. That there are missing pages is the history of mankind. I believe civilization is far older than Mesopotamia, 3500 BC but has been knocked back into the Stone Age in the Younger Dryas climate catastrophe 12,600 years ago, where a meteorite hit the giant ice cap from the last ice age which reached parts of the United States. This killed off most of the giant mammals like saber-toothed tigers, giant sloths, most of the mammoths. The past 10 years a lot of evidence has been uncovered to support this, like Gablakita Pay in Turkey being from 10,000 BC and an impact crater in Greenland from 12,000 years ago with a diameter of 34 kilometers. We've also found unexplainable genetic links between humans from the Amazon and aboriginals from Australia, and only in the Amazon. This is important because this link is not found in North America and thus excluding migration of these genetic strains through the Beringer Strait. This could mean that our estimates of the first humans reaching the Americas, a little over 10.000 years ago, could be way off as ancient humans might have been able to cross the oceans. How else could people have reached places like Easter Island? where the closest mainland is 3.500 kilometers away. I do, however, not think this is a deliberate conspiracy but more a case or sticking with what we've accepted. Graham Hancock has some nice books and lectures, and Jimmy from the YouTube channel Bright Insight talks a lot about these theories. American prisons generate too much money for us to ever take the rehabilitation part of the process seriously. Therefore we will always have prisons. We have three in my town. The population of this town is about 40,000 and the prisons employ about 600 people. Add in the halfway houses and county jail you are looking at close to 1,000 people that have good paying government jobs. Not to mention all the police officers, judges, probation officers and criminal lawyers. If we took criminal justice reform seriously, a lot of people would be put off a job and our state funding would go way down. Some conspiracy theories, think flat earth or anti-vax were deliberately created to ease the public into accepting internet censorship. For example, if YouTube censors out pro anti vax videos, the public is happy to accept that kind of censorship because it's a matter of public health and safety, and negatively impacts children. But where do you draw the line? If we set a precedent that it's okay to censor one side of an argument, even if it's a ridiculous argument, there's really no limit to what gets censored in the future. It seems like the anti vax movement has gained so much traction recently. It's on the news so frequently and talked about everywhere. Yet I've never actually encountered an anti-vaxxer in reality, nor do I know anyone that knows an anti-vaxxer. Seems like a made-up problem, or an exaggerated problem, so that the public can become outraged, demand that this group be silenced and welcome internet censorship. People are farmed. Not physically but economically. Capitalism works by adjusting prices to the point just below where it becomes too expensive. Products except in the most competitive areas are priced not at what they cost to produce but at what you, the idiot consumer, are willing to pay for it. Therefore we are all kept in a state of relative poorness. This ensures those at the top maintain control. Consider this as proof. If we stopped buying things for the sake of it, what would happen to pricing and what would happen to those mega corporations who are farming us? Skincare is a hoax to scam users of their money. It's designed to give skin temporary qualities that make it desirable, softness, smoothness, cleanliness, etc., but that's all it is. Temporary. Once the effect goes away, it leaves the skin in a slightly worsened state, 
and there begins a cycle of dependency. Either a dependency of the same brand or one similar, or one that claims to be better, at a more premium price. My evidence is that my girlfriend, and sister use such products. It's all lined up on the bathroom counter. Bottles and bottles of toners, cleansers, masks, scrubs. You name it. But despite using all these products their skin is still not what they'd like it to be. Me on the other hand, washes my face with water and dries it with a rough towel. It's like I'm trying to sand my face off with the towel. And then I just put some moisturizer on because my skin gets uncomfortably dry without it. I think I messed myself over there because now I have a dependency on the moisturizer. Anyway, my skin is still way better than theirs, and I use way less products.